it's a, I think it's a very big question whether we should see anti-Semitism as sui generis. Meaning that is this a is is the is the is the hatred or antipathy toward the Jew or towards Jews or towards Judaism, is it categorically different than the hatred of any people toward any other people? Do we see anti-Semitism as a as a part of a of a larger problem of prejudice and hatred that human beings have toward one another, which they probably have had toward the beginning of time, or do we see it as something special? I think that. Dr. Lightman is offering a theory that there's something sui generis about, about anti-Semitism, and it goes back to the Abrahamic origins and the idea of interconnectedness and the way in which people over time have had both difficult resistance toward that interconnectedness and also the way Jews who carry that Abrahamic mandate have not expressed and exemplified that kind of interconnectedness through their experience as Jews and through Judaism. And again, I think that's, that, that, that's a really fascinating way of thinking about it. But I would say in terms of questions of solutions, is there a solution to anti-Semitism? No, I don't think there is. I don't think there's a solution to prejudice. I mean, I think that- So, so, that, so, so that's the question. Why? Why? There is an excellent solution to anti-Semitism. It is that Jews themselves will begin to follow that human connection that Abraham was talking about, love covers all crimes and so forth, rising above all of the conflicts, hatred, division between them. This is what is called crimes, that they will cover it with love, with greater connection, with adhesion with each other, and by that, they will radiate that peace to, towards the world, to a state called the final correction. Yeah, I mean, I hear that, but you know, that's, that is very, very similar to the Christian message, because that was, that was basically what Jesus was teaching in the gospel, right? As, a Jew, as, maybe, as maybe an inheritor of the Abrahamic tradition. That, that the, you know, the idea of love, of love, loving the enemy, the idea of interconnectedness is, is precisely what Christianity in its origins had basically professed. We don't need to love the enemy. What we need to do is correct ourselves. Then we'll see that we actually don't have enemies, because our mutual hatred and conflicts, that is what births the enemies in the world towards us. No, I, I, I understand that. And, and, and there is, by the way, there is a rendering of that message of Jesus, which is precisely what you said, that when we fix ourselves, we'll realize that we don't actually have any enemies. In any event, I, I don't want to kind of get into that. It's a whole other thing. No, I, I, uh, to me, it doesn't matter if someone said this or said that. I, I myself didn't study Jesus, and I don't intend to, because and many can write and speak in his name. What I'm talking about is what our inner Torah is actually about, what the internality of Kabbalah talks about from generation to generation to this day. This is what the Book of Zohar talks about. This is what the, the ancient texts are talking about. And so that's irrelevant to what, what Jesus has to say in, in that regards. You know, that's true. I think that, that in a way, um, and this actually speaks closer to it simply because of, of, um, of, of Rabbi Ashlag's uh, uh, relationship to communism, for example, I think that that um, you know communism too makes that argument to some degree, and and that's why I think that Rabbi Ashlag had so much sympathy toward communism because he saw that it was a social manifestation of what he considered to be a cabalistic secret in a certain way. Um, now, Ken. I guess the question then we, we could ask right. is is why you know. The fact that these different experiments at the solution to the problem of not only anti-Semitism, but the solution of inter-ethnic hatred, the solution of racial hatred, the solution of bigotry, um, never seem to actually be able to grow roots deep enough to sustain a civilization toward that goal. That human beings, and this goes back to the Kabbalah as well, in terms of the relationship between the Sitra Akhra, the Yetzara, all of those kinds of things, right? So we're always struggling with that challenge of the fallibility. 
אנחנו נאבקים רק עם האגו שלנו. מה שאנחנו מתארגלים עם זה האגו. זה המשמעות של האגו, או הסטרה אחרא, או כל מיני צד, או כל מיני צדים. אין יותר מה להתמודד עם זה מאשר האגו האנושי. ואם אנחנו מנסים לעשות את זה נכון על ידי עזרת אחד, אנחנו צריכים להתמודד עם עצמנו שיש לנו אחר כך אחרת. זה או שאנחנו נתמודד נגד האגו, ונתחיל להתמודד עם זה מעבר לזה. That's what Abraham was talking about. That's what's called love covers all crimes. And, or, as it says, this will become your burial place. One of the two. And so, what I'm seeing is that we're in a state where we don't really have a choice. I used to write about anti-Semitism happening in America 15 years ago. About 15 years ago. As I... Uh, as, as I wrote about the European Union coming to a crisis within 20 years, and these things unfortunately are happening, but it's not because I'm, I have some prediction spirit, it's because there's laws of nature that can certainly foresee and predict what's happening.